uh, see, there, everybody has interest. There'll be people who, who like science, astronomy, geography, history. But I think the most important thing is history. As children, all of us have listened to stories of the past. Whether it's Chandamama. Do you have Chandamama in Hindi? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, um, uh, all those are stories we hear. We've been told stories about the past, about kings, about our... We've had such an illustrious past. Just a small thing that I want to bring to your notice. We all talk about the pyramids and how could they have possibly built it? How did they do it so many years ago? But do you know that in India, we have so many temples, but the highest, the one with the highest gopuram is there in, in um, Tanjavur, which is where the Chola dynasty had happened, and his role, Raja Raja Cholan, had built it. That particular temple has the highest gopuram in the whole world. The top stone alone, it's a single stone that weighs 80 tons. 80 tons, not one ton or two tons. And how did they do it? But do we know that? We all go to the pyramids, we go see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Someone said something very nicely. He said, we are actually appreciating a building that doesn't stand. It's falling over and wow, let's take a picture, let's take a selfie and we're getting excited. But we have temples today that stand and they didn't use plaster. Do you know that for this particular stone, they had to use a ramp, which was six kilometers long, which was pulled by bulls, elephants and people. Six kilometers long to get it up there, without any machinery, without any cranes, without any, anything. And they didn't have plaster. It's withstood six earthquakes. You know what happens when an earthquake comes, without plaster. What they have done is they have an outer wall, then inside that they have a corridor of six feet, which is an open, just a corridor. And then they have another structure inside which goes all the way to the top, which is why they can withstand earthquakes, which is why they stood so long. So these are all things that we need to know about. This particular king has built 5,000 dams in his time and he's made a water management ministry in that time. He's had elections for the village leaders. He's, he's asked them to name cities after women. Why should it only be men? Why can't it be named after a queen? And they've had hospitals, free hospitals, and uh, they've... And, and he actually brought loans. I mean, he used to give loans. He used to help people get dignity, not just throw money around. So this is something that's so illustrious. And this happened in the 9th century. I'm sorry, I'm taking so much time. No, it happened in the 9th century when the rest of the world, you talk about superpowers today. The 9th century, all this happened when we had the biggest maritime uh, uh, naval thing in, in the world. And it went all the way to Bali, all the way to Malaysia, and went till we sent emissary, emissaries to Ch uh, China. And you know what was the superpower doing then? America hadn't been discovered by Columbus till 500 years later. <laughs> So think about our culture, think about how advanced we were. We need to be proud of this. It's nothing to do with North India, South India, West India, East India. It is, we are Indians and we, I mean, we need to feel proud about that. And that England, is England is so illustrious, but England's were invaded by the Vikings and the Europe was in the dark ages during the 9th century. They had nothing going on. So don't you think we should celebrate history? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. I need water, please. <laughs>